Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Kerry takes time to visit the Roseau Primary School. The Ministry of Health launches a revised dental procedures manual and the Solid Waste Management Corporation continues the drive to promote recycling. Thank you for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Kimani Serja. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after this. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Thank you for staying with us. The Roseau Primary School had a special guest on Monday morning. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, accompanied by Senator Alvin Bernard, visited the school this morning. Principal Greta Roberts, the rest of her staff, and especially the students, warmly welcomed the Honorable Prime Minister and expressed elation about his visit to their school. Honorable Skerritt took time to visit each classroom and even gave a brief lesson in descriptive writing to the students preparing for the 2015 National Assessment. What else? Let's call it out, call it out. It's hobbies. It's hobbies. Pet. Pet. Alright, I'll put it down. I'll put it down. Huh? What type of pet? What type of pet? What else? Huh? Oh. Nice. Nice. The Dominican leader also took time to give the students some valuable advice. For common entrance, you have to study. You know, study, 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 and pay attention to your teachers. Okay? You can watch TV, you can play, but if you do too much of it, then you're in trouble. Okay? But I see all of you are very bright students and you can make yourself first of all proud and you can make your family proud and give the Rosa Primary School the usual great name it has. Okay? But do not put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Just be calm, study, pray to God and you will well. The Prime Minister also took a tour of the school's computer room and the canteen. Dominica joined the rest of the world last Friday in the observance of World Mental Health Day. The objective of this global observance was to bring awareness to the issue of mental illness and the work of mental health care workers. GIS News spoke with the head of the psychiatric unit at the Princess Margaret Hospital, Dr. Griffin Benjamin, who shared some light on the state of mental health and health care on the island. Dr. Benjamin says, based on the definition of mental illness, it is more common than is generally believed. Mental illness is characterized by disturbances a person may go through in the way he functions, in his behavior, in the way he thinks, and also the way he feels. So a normally functional person can suddenly have changes in his behavior and his thinking and his feeling, which could be induced by a number of things, commonly in Dominica drugs, or simply without any warning at all. A person went to sleep and probably with a few social problems, marital, family problems, find that they are not coping anymore. So there so a disturbance in the way you think, feel and behave 
when you lose control of those faculties, you, do, you can be diagnosed with a mental illness. Statistics indicate that one in three people may be diagnosed with a mental illness in their lifetime, and 29% of the world's population may be diagnosed with an illness other than schizophrenia. Dr. Benjamin says while the local society has come a long way in accepting mental illness, a common misconception still exists. The only problems that people misunderstand, the only pro misunderstanding that there exists in mental illness is that people think if you're mentally ill, you're there, you're so for the rest of your life. Not even with schizophrenia. Are you going, you may be remain ill for the rest of your life. Because before treatment days, 35, 36% of people would recover from schizophrenia. Now we are using all forms of treatment. Science has developed very new ways of treating this condition. And in, the, in, the, in, in developing countries, at least 62% of people recover from schizophrenia. That means go on to live a normal life. It's, it's similar to diabetes and high blood pressure. Your mom has diabetes, she has high blood pressure. Is her life over? Is, does she have a death sentence? The answer is no. Once she complies to treatment and follow up with her doctor and her nurses, she can live a normal life like anybody who has never had a diagnosis. In fact, he says patients with mental illness usually have better outcomes than those with other chronic non-communicable diseases and live longer. There remains a need to eradicate the stigma of mental illness. His message on the heels of World Mental Health Day 2014 is that recovery is possible. Look out for more on this story in a subsequent newscast. Mervyn, it's really sad that even in 2014, um, there still is a stigma about mental illness in our society. Yeah, one would have thought that um, this thing would have gone away by now. But um, what we need to realize also that um, it's not about being quote unquote mad, like mad people walking around being the streets. Crazy. That's right. So, I mean, there are people out there who are not referred to as mad, but they suffer from some form of mental, mental illness. illness. I mean, there is. Um, quite apart from the people who probably were involved in some in drugs or something like this, there are people out there who suffer from, for example, depression, anxiety, for example. So their mental illness is real. It's just, I mean, some form of illness other than um, bad stomach or whatever it is, but we suffer from it. People suffer from it all the time, and you'd be surprised, as the doctor said, you'd be surprised at the number of people out there who are suffering from mental illness. Yes, and I think it's good that there is World Mental Health Day so that the world, the globe, can have a conversation about mental illness so that people can become more aware of it and understand better people that go through um, mental illnesses, what they go through. As you mentioned, it's not, quote-unquote, being crazy or being mad, right. which is usually schizophrenia, but people go through anxiety and depression and they withdraw from society, bipolar disease, all these things are uh, mental, mental illnesses. So it's good that the world is having this conversation. And, and clearly, what, what at the end of the day, with um, the world discussing this mental health issue, um, the people out there will not be ashamed of coming out. That's right. You know, you, you feel that, for example, as I, as I mentioned before, depression. Mm -hmm. um, there are people, as a result of depression, they go into this um, state where, um, quote unquote, once again, the, the word comes up, mad right. or crazy. Right. But at the end of the day, it's you can. It's so easy for one to move from being stable and unstable in in that regard. Right, because because I think they were walking on Friday, and one of the themes, uh, well, well, what they were chanting on the street is that we are working for recovery. Exactly. So it means that people that go through mental illnesses, they can recover from it. That's right. Yes. In more news, a revised dental procedures manual is expected to enhance the quality of oral care given to the public. This comes after the launch of the revised document on Friday, October 10, at the Acute Psychiatric Unit of the Princess Margaret Hospital. The process to complete the manual began in January 2014 with a stakeholders workshop to discuss what would form part of that manual. PAHO representative Shirley Augustine is advocating for the manual to be used wisely. I want to congratulate Dr. John and her staff on this very important achievement. And my sincere hope is that 
It will not just become a document that sits on a shelf somewhere. A lot of work went into the development of the document. A lot of money was paid to get the document to the stage that it is now. So I hope that all of you at the dental department will ensure that you use the document, that the standards that are outlined within this document are kept, and above all, that the document will be a means of ensuring that our people in Dominica get the highest standard of quality oral care that we all deserve. Some of the objectives of the revised manual includes promoting the general knowledge of good oral practices to increase monitoring of services provided in the clinics and standardizing dental health clinics across Dominica. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Helen Roy, says this is a milestone for the ministry and expects the manual to be used appropriately. The procedures are not meant to tell dental providers how to perform dental procedures. However, practice guidelines may be adopted to encourage the use of the most scientifically acceptable material and methods. As the Ministry of Health and by extension the Government of Dominica continues its drive to maximize the quality of customer service across the board, the Ministry of Health through its dental unit takes great pleasure in having been able to develop a dental procedure manual and to begin utilizing the updated information to provide excellent oral health services to the public, particularly to vulnerable groups and those in need, enabling them to achieve the highest level of dental health care appropriate to their needs. It is also hoped that the manual is used to educate new staff into the profession and as a training tool for current staff. In other news, the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation is hoping that the corporation's thrust for recycling waste can soon be implemented. The acting general manager of the corporation, Florian Mitchell, says that while solid waste cannot afford to put all the necessary measures in place, the company is taking on the challenge one project at a time. One such project is the collaboration with schools across the island. Recycling, we have a project at the school level, um, the Goodwill Primary School um, and other schools where they participated in showcasing some of the things that you could do with material. Um, at the exhibit on Wednesday, which was the 24th year exhibit at the stadium, and the public was, was able to see things that could have been done um, at the, if you go to the Point, Point Michel Primary School, you see they have tires on their wall. What they did, they have tires, they painted it out, they put all the soil in there and they plant, they use it as beautification. The corporation recently hosted an exhibition where schools were able to display and even sell their recycled products. The Dominica Solid Waste Corporation has also engaged a few communities in its recycling efforts. Solid Waste have recyclable programs in the various communities, um, Goodwill, Center, um, we have a recycling schedule. When we look at the northeast of the island from Penville all the way down to Point Millat. Um, we have a fortnightly collection and then we try to collect all the recyclable material from that, from, from those areas. Then you would say, well, if soil waste is collecting it, then what do we do with it? Because you could collect the material and you could just put it on the landfill. You understand? So then that would be defeating the purpose. So but, but what we do, um, all our plastic material, we stockpile them on the landfill. We actually have a shed on the landfill where we have all our pet bottles. Um, all the aluminum cans, we, we pull that apart. We separate it. We also have a stockpile of aluminum cans on the landfill. Glass, we partner with Benjo, we partner with Coca-Cola, and we're exporting glass to a company in Trinidad. You're clear, you're green, you're amber. So these are some of the things that we're doing in ensuring that some of those waste material, they do not go to the landfill. Mitchell says reducing the waste that goes to the landfill is beneficial to all Dominicans. It's a relief to all taxpayers of Dominica because in, in the construction of a sanitary landfill, so we don't have that kind of capital. We'd have to engage the government of Dominica for, let's say, $10 million to construct in a landfill. So if you could remove all those materials from you that's coming to your waste stream, if, they don't, if you are not landfilling it, then you're going to have a longer lifespan for your landfill. So anything that you'll be landfilling would be like residual items. Meantime, as part of its efforts to ingrain the importance of recycling and the reduction of waste on the minds of the youth, 
The Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation has organized the Telephone Directory Collection Competition among schools in Dominica. Acting General Manager of the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation gives details of that competition. Through the Barbados Directory, Yellow Pages, we have a program which ran which is currently running from the 29th of September to the 24th of October, wherein we are trying to collect directories, telephone directories. Um, not in the current year 2014, any um, directory 2014 back. If, you, if your daughter or your son bring a 2014 directory to, the, to, the, the, to their school, it will not be accepted. But from 2014 back, um, the way the program is run is that the, the, the student with the most amount of directories that child will receive an iPad. The winning school with the most directory will receive a computer. And at each school we have what is called a recycling champion. That individual is responsible for recording all the data coming in. So students A bring five books today, student B bring two tomorrow. That recycling champion records all that data. Right? And we also have a prize for each recycling champion at the respective schools. And this competition is being run at the high school level. Mitchell says that the corporation is looking to collect as many as 20,000 directories, which he says will be exported. The solid waste manager informed that the competition is ongoing, especially in schools where an environmental club exists. Only directories from 2013 backwards will be accepted. A World Creole Music Festival team comprising festival agent Leroy Waddix Charles and director of tourism Colin Piper embarked on a second promotional tour around the region earlier this month. Charles went into detail at a press conference last week about what he described as a successful trip. It began in the French Antilles, then we visited St. Martin Anguilla. And we actually revisited Martinique and Guadeloupe because uh, it's one of our prime markets and it was important that we actually went on the ground and really get the patrons excited and they indeed were. We climaxed the promotion in St. Lucia and I really want to single out St. Lucia because the support there was overwhelming. And I want to go on record and say St. Lucia sees this festival like a St. Lucian festival. They actually own it and claim it Every single store, every single place you went, the festival, the World Creole Music Festival was like the anthem. They respected the festival and they claim it. We had discussions with the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Kenny Anderson, who was elated to be part of the whole Creole family. We did some groundwork at Grosile, and Grosile is a, a night activity on a Friday night. I actually stayed back especially for that. And the response was also overwhelming. According to Charles, the team was engaged in over 17 interviews in St. Lucia alone. For the first time after many years, the team also visited Trinidad to do some advertising. Tourism director Piper explained this particular stopover was aimed at promoting Dominica as a destination. While in Trinidad, uh, we spoke about Dominica 365 days a year. We spoke about, uh, obviously, the World Creole Music Festival, which is one of our signature events for, um, um, in terms of culture. We spoke about the Nature Island Challenge, which is another event in terms of just bringing hikers. And then, obviously, we spoke about our, our dive as well. We were on three TV programs. We were on a couple um, radio programs. Um, uh, to date, we've had, <coughs> excuse me, I think two or three articles um, and um, we'll be hosting a press from Trinidad coming up. So we realized that we were there first part of October um, and we will convince some people to come this year. However, from a destination perspective, it is to plant the seed and throughout the years to continue um, um, feeding that market with information. Piper informed on the logistics behind the selection of Trinidad as a platform for advertising. The whole uh, reason for going into Trinidad was actually based on a systematic approach where we realized that over 50% of our visitors, our visitor arrivals are from the Caribbean. And so intra-regional travel is very important. 
And when we looked at which of the islands we should focus on, we did a study with focus groups and all of that. And we determined that in terms of population, in terms of uh, uh, disposable income, propensity to travel internationally, middle in, uh, the, 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 the size of the middle income, that Trinidad was in fact the, the source market that we should go after. Having looked at all of them, eh, from Jamaica all the way down to even Suriname and Guyana. And that's the English news. Macpherson St. Louis comes up next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non, moi, c'est Macpherson St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique Chen a eu une cérémonie pour renommer Bass Avion Melville Hall en l'honneur ancien premier ministre Honorable Rosie Douglas et puis Honorable Pierre Charles. Si l'on premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, le gouvernement prend une décision sans la en manière de recogniser le bon travail de Douglas et puis Charles pour qu'on ne le développement du pays. Bass Avion a créé Douglas Charles Airport. Le gouvernement Dominique a invité tout le monde et tout le monde qui a visité en parmi d'autres pour attendre en grand cérémonie en Melville Hall à ce le 27 octobre au soir, l'année salam. Détail pour sortir votre comité qui en charge en Vanna Masala. Pour le ministre Skerritt aussi fait parole en grand cérémonie qui pour prend place pour nommer Chimé Highway Melville Hall qui est aussi prend place à ce le 30 octobre, l'année salam. On a de nouvelles, Mouna Wankachakou a tapé un système de l'eau bien formidable. Le projet de Sanla a bâti en phase pour mieux déjà fini. Parole de Sanla a sorti de l'office de relations publiques compagnie de Wasco, M. Edward Regist. Nous allons à Kachakou. Nous faisons un autre gros projet là. Ça, c'est un projet qui a un des gens de Kachakou. Esprit de qui a été dans une petite place à Kachakou qui est Savan. Il y a un peu monde là. là. Um, ce monde a été toujours um, dit comment il n'y a pas qu'à trouver de l'eau. Il a toujours qu'à aller. Il y a toujours un problème avec l'eau en haut. Avec l'année, il y a un monde qui a bâti le caïn neuf. Il n'y a pas de ça continuer à bâtir ce caïn là. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de l'eau. Um, si vous changez en année 2008, le um, cyclone Oma est passé. Um, ces pipes-là qui étaient capturées globalement à Kachakou étaient dommagées. La mer a été capable de dommager ces pipes-là. Et nous tenons pour faire une première phase de projet pour capturer globalement à Kachakou. Là, nous avons dépensé plus de 800 000 dollars pour faire une première phase de projet pour nous ça pour ne pas sortir de l'eau souffrir pour nous amener global à Kachakou. Bon, ça c'était la première phase là. Regis aussi fait pas la deuxième phase là qui a commencé. Nous avons commencé la deuxième phase là. Avec la deuxième phase là, c'est pour nous mener global à la savane avec les autres côtés à Kachakou. Nous avons bâti un drame encore qui a été chébé. 30 000 gallons de l'eau. Nous aussi avons aussi fait un caille pour pomper de l'eau, parce que c'est un pumping house. Nous avons mis un bagage électrique pour aider la machine à pomper de l'eau. Nous avons mis un terre tout le pour mettre un tank. Comme ça, tout ça, ça a coûté presque comme nous l'avons dit. 4, presque 10 000 millions de dollars. Il plus de 400 dollars avec 400 millions de dollars. Avec ça, c'est un gros projet même. Pour la nouvelle département qui a une responsabilité pour le traitement d'un, lancer un manuel qui a servi comme guide, dentiste et puis d'autres officiers, servi pour le traitement d'un, ça a créé Oral Health. Docteur Idoline John, c'est chef du département d'un, Dominique. C'est un document que nous avons visité. L'information qui est en dedans, nous avons servi. Ce n'est pas pas bon, mais tout le monde est modernisé actuellement et puis nous avons upgradé. C'est un document qui peut provider des guidelines, des protocoles. Nous avons servi dans le département. Ce n'est pas un document qui peut dire 
um, dentista o dentista para ver se sabe fazer, mas é como ok, se so, ele diz o um, certo lugar o único para ver e pi o um, e quando ele diz o sabe o único para ver, porque o com na ele diz o mundo que cá vem a departamento lá que eu pa dentista eu sei dental assistant eu sei dental terapeuta eu sei hygienist e chaque mon me role you pour play pour jouer so un document ça là il a dit mon ça you need to be you expect to say what is um expected of them so c'est on your guideline là pour dit mon et puis um il y a technique ça dans qui ob qui c'est ob qui upgrade et puis um, nous avons mis ça pour tout le monde, nous avons provide le service là, et c'est un bon qualité de service pour le public. Là. Et puis finalement, promotion de pour le Festival Creole Mondial en Saint-Lucie. Par la salle de la sortie de l'officier Dominique Festival Commission, M. Leroy Wadix Charles. Saint-Lucie qui a dit le festival là, c'est ça. Yo. Parce que nous, nous avons même l'histoire, nous avons même, c'est Africain aussi dans nous. Et là-bas, là, nous avons passé à la 17 différents médias et ces journalistes là étaient excités quand un reportage d'ailleurs fait pour festival là et tout partout où passer tout ces monde là excité quand festival là nous faisons un rendez-vous à Gouzile ça c'est une fête à la rue et nous faisons publicité là aussi et, et ces monde là excité nous parle nous balance ce programme là et ces monde là content et ces monde là déjà dit ils déjà ni billet yo pour descendre pour le festival là, et spécialement Midnight Groovers, parce que vous aimez Midnight Groovers là-bas. Et vous déjà ni yo pour jouer à cette ici le 18 octobre. Et il te fait plaisir pour nous, nous à Dominique, on est oui, travail Midnight Groovers, parce que vous dit c'est longtemps que vous avez suivi la musique Midnight Groovers. Et vous même content, Dominique et festival là, car on est oui, Midnight Groovers l'année là ça. Messieurs, mesdames, c'est tout pour nous faire un créole pour à présent. Non, moi, c'est Marc Fousson Los. What? Coming up next, a tip on using your credit card effectively. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. We have another financial tip from the ECCB for this month, which is Financial Information Month. Before using your credit card, ensure that you can pay off the balance at the statement due date. Remember, the most expensive form of debt could be credit card debt, since it usually carries very high interest rates. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and your comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Kimani Senja. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.